Welcome to Opalesk TV. Today I'm in the InvestCorp office, which is an alternative asset manager with $12 billion in hedge fund, private equity, and real estate assets under management. Joining me today is Deepak Gurnani, who is the head of the $5 billion hedge fund business at InvestCorp. Deepak is widely considered to be one of the most innovative thinkers in risk management practices and systems in hedge fund investing. Deepak, thank you for joining me today, and can you give us a brief background into your history, your personal history, and the history of InvestCorp? Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I have been with uh, InvestCorp for 18 plus years. We, as, as I think you quoted some of the AUM numbers. In hedge funds, we run about $5 billion. Uh, I think what is sort of somewhat unique is, out of that $5 billion, a billion dollars is InvestCorp proprietary capital, and that's true for all of our different product lines. We also do alternatives only. So we do hedge funds, we do private equity, we do real estate. And over 90% of our assets are institutional assets. Over 70% are U.S. institutions. So in that regard, I think we are sort of somewhat unique within the hedge fund world. Uh, you mentioned risk management. That's really where I started my career at InvestCorp. I was also fortunate. I was one of the two founders of the hedge fund business when we started in 1996. And been doing that for 50 plus years now. Deepak, is InvestCorp a fund of funds or how would you characterize your firm? We are not really a fund of funds. In fact, that's one of the questions when every time we meet an investor, they would like to know if you're a fund of funds. If you're not a fund of funds, are you a direct hedge fund? Or are you a single manager? And we say we all of the above, right? So we started as fund of funds, but that's only 16% of our business today, right? We do customized solutions. That's 55% of our business. We also have a seeding business and a single manager platform, that's about 30% of our business. So we believe that it's important as the industry evolves, as the investor needs evolve, as an organization, we need to evolve, right? And that's exactly what has happened. We started as fund of funds, but it's only 16% of our business and we do customized portfolios and we do single managers. And, you know, as other products, as other needs arise, we are very much, you know, we are going to keep up with that, right? So for example, we are looking to launch trade-based investable products, right? And that's again going to be a part of a product offering. So we look at ourselves truly as a hedge fund solutions provider. I know the word solutions is sort of overused, but I truly look at us as being a solutions provider in the area of hedge funds. Deepak, you were profiled in Kathleen Ritterizer's book, Top Hedge Fund Investors, as one of the few risk masters in the industry. Can you talk about the culture at InvestCorp that allowed you to develop your skill set and your mindset for risk management? I think there are two reasons why we focus on risk within the hedge fund business. I think the first is my background, right? So I started in the risk area. So so naturally, you know, when we started investing in hedge funds, there's a lot of focus on risk from my perspective. I think the second, which is more important, is I think a fundamental issue with the hedge fund industry. Hedge funds do attract the best investment talent, but when it comes to managing risks, the the kind of focus is I would say at best average. Right? I think we saw it on a limited scale in 1998, we've seen it over the years, and I think 2008 highlighted those issues. So as a result, right from the beginning, in Westcop, we identified that as an issue and felt that as a fiduciary, we could provide that additional layer of risk management comfort that our investors deserve. And that's really been the reason why we have been focused on risk from the beginning. And there are several elements to that strategy. One of those key elements is also use of managed accounts. The second element is focusing on getting transparency from the underlying funds, running it through our risk systems. And we've been sort of focused on this right from the beginning. At the beginning, when we started in 96, funds would, hedge funds would look at us as if, you know, you're from another planet asking for what do they do? And, you know, those were the days where you just put money with hedge funds, lock it up for two, three years and ask no questions and you get your money, hopefully get your money and some returns back at the end of two to three year period. I'm glad to say things have changed. I think the industry has got around to our way of thinking, especially when it comes to risk management. It was very kind of Kathleen to profile uh, me within the book and invest within the book. And I think she has done a fantastic job just putting that book together with uh, all the different thinkers.
I know InvestCorp was one of the earliest proponents of managed accounts. Can you talk to me about what appealed to you from a risk management perspective about managed accounts? There are two broad advantages with managed accounts, which is what really appealed to us. First is asset protection. Right? When you set up a managed account, mm -hmm. uh, you have direct control over the assets that you hold in your account. As distinct from when you are invested in a fund, the hedge fund manager has control over the assets and employees the custodian or the prime broker. In a managed account, you have direct control over that. So that's advantage number one, very critical advantage. I think the second and perhaps also more important is using the information that you get from the managed account to take active risk management decisions. So if I look back at periods like 2008, what really got hedge funds into trouble, and I think that's been true again, you know, when I look back at even 1998, but I think the industry sort of really focused on it in 2008 was excessive risk taking through either excessive leverage, uh, concentrated positions, illiquidity, hedge funds, you signed up to do strategy one, they're doing something else, style drift, or they are taking some sort of market beta as a part of those exposures. And managed accounts has given us the ability to be able to control these unwanted risks and calibrate the risks within acceptable parameters. As a result, in 2008, InvestCorp portfolio as well as our investor portfolio hugely outperformed the competition and other portfolios because of this focus on risk through managed account structure. So both asset protection as well as be your ability to manage risk through managed accounts are really the two key advantages why we've uh, focused on managed accounts. I also recently authored a white paper along with Christopher Goat of Allstate Insurance where we talk about the advantages and benefits of uh, managed account along with specific case studies. I think another topic that we do focus in that white paper I think is the issue of negative selection bias. There seems to be a perception within the industry that to the extent that managers do managed accounts, it's because they are desperate for capital, they don't have the performance to back up what they do, and they try to get in investors through offering managed account, which involves a lot more additional work on behalf of the manager. Our results actually show that uh, that negative selection bias is a myth. It doesn't exist. And again, during difficult periods like 2008, we go into very specifics in the white paper, how the InvestCorp and the Allstate uh, portfolios actually outperformed the industry during the more difficult period where you really wanted to focus on risk and safety. And so to that extent, if there is any negative selection bias, we certainly haven't experienced it in our portfolios at all. How does InvestCorp determine if managers are actually worth the fees they're charging? Fees is, is clearly a very hotly debated topic within the industry. Right? And I think our stance on, the, on fees has been clear pretty much from the beginning is that we do not mind paying fees for alpha. Right? So to the extent that the managers do something unique and are generating return in excess of uh, just returns from beta, we don't mind paying fees for that. So a big part of when we sign up a manager is to dissect the returns into beta returns, i.e. returns from market or from market risk factors, and alpha or idiosyncratic return to that manager. And to the uh, measuring that alpha and then relating fees as a proportion of alpha is really how we get comfortable with fees. And a key role that we perform for our, for our portfolio and for our client portfolio is to be able to dissect that. And it's easier said than done within hedge funds. It does require a specific cell to be able to split those returns into alpha and beta. To calculate what is alpha, you need to get a measure of beta. And unfortunately, within the hedge fund industry, there are issues with the way uh, the hedge fund indices compute the returns, right? Or they compile the information and compute the returns. It's well publicized. There are lots of you know different issues along with that. So sometime back in 2002, 2003, we actually decided to embark on a project, what we refer to as the Alpha project, to determine what is the hedge fund return, the systematic component of hedge fund return to the various hedge fund strategies. Right? So we, we are very familiar with the hedge fund indices. We have been using them for a number of years. 
but we felt that that did not give us sufficient information to get a good handle of what is the strategy return or beta. Deepak, talk to me more in depth about the Alpha project. I know you and your team have been working on this project for a long time. What is the Alpha project and what are the implications of a program like this on the hedge fund industry? We started this project in 2003, 2002-2003. We hired a team of six to eight people. We had a big technology budget for computer systems as well as for buying data which can be very expensive and we spent three to four years working on developing returns to those systematic factors or hedge fund strategies and that's our measure of what is the beta to hedge fund strategy so when we look for managers we look for managers who can outperform the returns to the systematic strategies the way we have developed them that excess return or alpha is what we have to put in perspective of what are the fees that they are charging. So in addition to, so clearly when you look at the way I described the Alpha project, it helped us choose managers who have outperformed the strategy return, i.e. they're doing something unique and different. Secondly, it has also given us good insights into the cyclicality associated with hedge fund strategy, what truly drives returns for those strategies. So. There are certain periods are good for certain strategies. So for example, when default rates are peaking, the following 36 months are good for credit distress strategy. Consequently, when spreads have blown out like they did in 2008 for relative value ARP strategies, the next 12 to 18 months tend to be very good for relative value arbitrage strategies. We saw that in 98, I did not have the research then, but this time in 2008, we had the benefit of that research. We were able to actually use it. We went to all of our investors as well as in the in the portfolios that we manage. We overweighted relative value arbitrage strategies as a result of the Alpha Project research and generated good returns. Then as 2009 played out, the returns from arbitrage strategies you know, were very strong. At the same time, we felt that it was opportune time because given the default rates had peaked, to move into credit distress strategy. Right? And then progressively over 2010, we started reducing the exposure to relative value arbitrage. So what I'm trying to give you the sense here is that the research not only helped us identify managers who are outperforming, but has also given us unique insights into what truly drives hedge funds. And our ability, and we have been able to use those insights to overweight and underweight certain strategies. And that has, and we've actually can demonstrate that that has added significant alpha to investor portfolios over time. We are very mindful that from a top-down perspective, we have to be recognized where we are from an economic uh, cycle perspective, from a business cycle perspective, and make portfolio allocations opportunistically. So you need to have, we have strong quantitative processes which keep us disciplined, but at the same time, we are opportunistic and would like to take advantage of the opportunities as they come along. Until this point, we sort of spoke about how the Alpha Project research has helped us identify managers that truly add alpha. And as I mentioned, we don't mind paying fees for alpha. In that regard, we are completely aligned with our investors. We've also used this research to make tactical asset allocation decision. So the next, I think the next logical extension of this research is to use this to actually as an investable product to get direct exposure to the strategy itself. So we have been running these portfolios for research purposes over the last several years. We actually saw even during 2007 and during the crisis of 2008 that the ability of our research to be able to track what was going on in the strategy and what was going on in the manager returns on almost a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis was so great that we felt that it was cap- it actually captures the essence of what truly drives those strategy returns. So it's but natural to now look at it as a next step and say, how do we get exposure to the strategy in a pure sense? Right? So if you may use like a core satellite approach where you have core exposure to the hedge fund strategies through the Alpha Project, what we refer to as grade-based implementation, and supplement that with managers who truly add Alpha. And a combination of those two, we believe, is the way the industry will evolve 
over the next five years or so. So how does the Alpha Project actually differ from hedge fund replication? Whenever we have presented this research to investors, sort of the first question that immediately comes up is, is this hedge fund replication, right? And our answer is no, it is not hedge fund replication. Hedge fund replication involves, and again, there are variations, but it will involve some sort of regression analysis where you look at a historical data period, conduct some regression analysis using market factors and come out with a portfolio comprised of market factors, which could be equities, it could be credit spreads, it could be volatility, and some combination thereof to get you exposure to hedge funds. Our approach, the trade-based implementation approach, essentially gives you exposure to hedge funds by investing in the same underlying strategy. So to that extent, the two are fundamentally different, right? If I may sort of use the parallel, to the extent that an investor is looking for exposure to the equity markets, you're investing in equities. You're not investing in something that looks like equities at most times, but at some times it doesn't look like equities. It behaves differently. I think it's a similar kind of a difference, right? So our view is to get exposure to hedge funds, you need to invest in the underlying strategies, not in market factors that at times may look like hedge funds, but at other times they may not behave the same way. In fact, we abandoned, we used to use market factors for research purposes internally. We abandoned that in 2002, 2003, because we found that those relationships between market factors and hedge funds do change significantly over time. So while replication kind of methods do a good job explaining in sample, out of sample, our experiences, they do not do a good job. As a result, we actually abandoned that and decided to invest our time and energy into developing our own trade-based strategies, which truly represented what hedge funds do. Deepak, you clearly have a personal zeal for quantitative analysis and how it informs your decisions at InvestCorp and your recommendations for your clients. Can you talk about how you incorporate quantitative analysis into your own investment decisions and for your recommendations for your clients? What is fundamental to the different parts of the investment process is use of quantitative techniques. Right? So we have again has, have been, I, I am personally a firm believer that the hedge fund investment problem does require, does present some challenges and use of good quantitative techniques can help in that process, right? So we have been invested in quantitative research team pretty much since the beginning, initially focused on the risk team. Over the last few years, we've actually also focused on having a quantitative research team that looks at all aspects of the investment process. The team is led by Ludger Henschel, who joined us about three years back. He comes from a very strong quantitative background. He's supported by five or six quantitative research professionals. And the team is charged and has the mandate to look at every aspect of the process and suggest improvements. So the first version of the risk system was considerably improved upon in the later versions by the quantitative research team. The dissecting of returns into alpha and beta, which we spoke about, was done by the quantitative research team. And the alpha project itself was overseen by the quantitative research team. So yes, it's partly because of my background. But I think importantly, approaching investments in hedge funds is a complex task, right? When I compare that to 1996, when we first started investing, investing in hedge funds was about getting to know hedge fund managers and providing access to hedge fund managers. We always felt uncomfortable with that being sort of the only way to invest in hedge funds. And so we have sort of focused on developing an investment process and quantitative methods are a part of that process, supplemented, of course, by having qualified professionals who can use that information for decision making.